Hi, how you guys doing today? So today is another episode of the We the People show, and it's me, your special guest host, RG. Unfortunately, we don't have Mr. Kermit the Frog today. Uh, normally, we do his voice in the beginning, and he just we're just gonna hold off. I think uh, we'll do it again when Boogie wakes up. Boogie's asleep in the room. He uh, put on his little um, sleep sheep and then went to bed. Uh, so we're going to take this time to make a video right now. It is roughly going to be 12. Today is the 20, it's uh, Monday, the um, 26th of January 2015. And what we're going to be talking about today is I went down to Verizon and I've been explaining to people how to tell if their phone is actually hacked and if it's on um, a server that it shouldn't be on, like a government server um, or something else that, that is preventing their messages from getting out or it's just people, uh, these malicious government officials, they're selling their information. So if they use their phone for their job, these guys, uh, these officials are getting paid to grab the information and to sell it to someone else. And it's part of what they call salami slicing um, and a bunch of other things. And we'll get into that on another time. But I want to talk about what SMS is. So every single um, carrier has an SMS address. SMS is a protocol where you can send messages, um, either text messages, that's really what they are, to a cell phone carrier. So for example, if I have Verizon, I can get a text message. All that comes through SMS. SMS, the phone number that it sends it to is mine. And what it really does is it sends it to my phone number at my carrier. So it's like an email address. And I receive it, I'll, be, I'll get it, and it takes off the back part. But I can also send a uh, text message to that same address just by adding the carrier in the back. So essentially, SMS is an email address, but it's a text message, and it's just at that domain for the carrier. And so when I was explaining this to the Verizon people, I think part of the thing was I didn't educate them, and they're not familiar with how it works. So today's going to be an education, um, an education um, tutorial. So I went online and I went to this place. Uh, we're going to do how. SMS works um, and the carrier SMS address. So on this first one right here, which I got from WiseGeek, it says right there, it says that, you know, um, the SMS is, uh, and I'll just kind of read it real quick. It says, SMS, a short messaging service, SMS, Address is the equivalent email address used by SMS systems to send messages to mobile phones through SMS system. So it's what I'm telling you. A text message is really just an email. Uh, for most users within the United States and Canada, their SMS address will be their phone number, including the area code, followed by an address locator that depends on the phone service where they have. So this is what I was saying. It is the carrier. So if I'm with Verizon, it'd be my number at Verizon, which is their SMS address is vtex.com. If I'm at at and it'd be my number at, uh, it's txt.att.net, um, and so forth. There's a bunch of other ones out there. And then it says, um, by understanding a person's SMS address, someone can easily and quickly send text messages to another person's mobile phone without using a phone or SMS program. So if I want to send you a message and I don't have a cell phone, I can still send you one by sending it to the email address of the device. So for example, you have a cell phone. Um, I want to send you a message. I don't have a cell phone. Because all I have to do is go find a computer that sends out uh, messages or text messages or emails, open up the, the messenger, email or text messenger, put your phone number and at your carrier and then send you a message. 
And even if I don't have a cell phone, it'll send you the message, you'll get it, you can respond. Um, so right here, we're going to kind of go down to the highlighted part. And it says an SMS address will be their phone number at their carrier. Right? And just if you see right there, it says for Verizon, it's vtex.com. Okay, and this one's from Wise Geek. Here's the URL where you can get it from. All right. And then the second one I have is that from Verizon. And this one from Verizon, I put how SMS works on your Verizon account, uh, what it is, the address, and if it's included. Just all the questions someone would have about text messaging, SMS messaging from Verizon. And so I went to their website, their official website, and they wrote it, and it talks about SMS text messaging, okay? The FAQs for text messaging. And the first one it says, it says, a text message right here is a message that when you text that is typed that you received versus a call right there. Okay. It is a reminder for apps and any type of communication that you want to send to the device. So for example, if your text messages aren't working, your device ain't working. Hacking. Right? And then right here it says a text message is an actual type message sent to your device. It can come from another mobile phone, tablet, or text messaging service, email, etc. And it's right there. Okay. And then it says, how do I sign up for text messaging? And it says right there that the text messages are already included. Let me see. They're already included in your plan. So the, the text messages are already included in your plan. And of course this is all from Verizon Wireless, the official website. So right here, how can I send how can I send an email or a text message, an M an SMS message? You can send it through your mobile device, your email, a tablet, anything that can have email or that is a texting service. See there. How do I send a text message right there? You can see very clearly. It says how you send a how you send a text message. You can enter the number or you can enter the number at vtex.com. Right there. At vtex.com. That's what I was telling them. There you go. And that's from Verizon. So that clearly says, you know, what Verizon, how you do it. It's included. It's a service. Nothing special about it. And then, so what is Verizon's SMS address for those of you who still need more information? This is from Google. And as you can read right there from Google, see the Google? It says vtex.com, vtex.com, at vtex.com. And of course, this is from Google. See right there, see the Google string? Okay. Um, and then
And then here's another example of how to send it to a Verizon customer or uh, you know Verizon mobile phone device. Right here, example, and it says, how do you send it? You send it to this address right here at vtex.com. So that's vtex.com, the number at vtex. Here's another one. This is from the Verizon Wireless Center again, right here. And what does it say? vtex.com. So the number at vtex.com. Number at vtex.com. <laughs> and then, so the reason why I'm showing you this is um, when people can't get their SMS messages or it comes from something else, um, it tells you that, you know, you possibly can be, uh, you possibly can have somebody showing you what is fraud. Fraud is basically, or phishing scams, or hacking, it's all the same. Basically, someone's taking your information, and then they're grabbing it, and picking and choosing. Like I said, they're selling it off, or they're giving you what they want, and letting you know or not know. So I get a message, and I read this, and I'm thinking, should I tell you? They're like, no. <laughs> and something that they don't care about here. Here's your message. Get it? <laughs> all right, so... Here's Verizon's information on fraudulent hacking. Fraudulent hacking, um, what to look for, how to tell, updates, high bills, not the same address. For example, I send you an address that comes from my phone number or a text message from my phone number and you get a text from a different address, then you know that somebody's stealing it. And that's how I was showing them. I would send it to myself from me, so my number at vtex.com, and when it come back, it come back from a different address. So I'm showing them, obviously, and you know, somebody's uh, fraudulently has control of my device. And I'll show you another thing that's going to help them to see that with the settings on the phone. And that's all it really is, is settings. But this says right here, fraudulent uh, email phishing and other things for people's cell phones. And then it says right here, if you read that, it says that... Uh, Cellular fraud is cloning or defined as the unauthorized use, tampering, or manipulation of a mobile phone service or the settings. That's really what it is. Okay. What is email phishing or texting messaging scam smishing? Phishing and smishing... Are di and phishing just happens to be part of the name for the Wi-Fi. So, uh, are designed to steal information by posing as a legitimate company. Criminals attempt to con or mislead individuals by providing personal information in many ways, including email, text messages, and scams, phone calls that appear to be from a legitimate business. Personal information that may be requested includes credit card information, account passwords, account information, and other valuable information. So you receive them a lot of times in text messages. And the reason why you receive them in text messages is because they're not, they, they don't like really calling people and, uh, you know, leaving their own voice to be recognized later. So how does the email scam, email or text scams work? An email and text scam usually use a well-known brain, uh, well-known brand names such as a bank, an insurance carrier or company, or even Verizon Wireless. Even Verizon Wireless, and that's what I'm telling them. These deceptive messages are sometimes called spoof emails because they are spoof or fake, and the appearance of a known website or company. Typically, the message requests the recipient to update and confirm personal information. Links may be provided to a website that may display the company logo or other recognized elements of the company. If a user visits the website, malware can be downloaded to the user's device or criminal 
or the criminal will capture information supplied by the user. So they will receive messages to update your service. Have you ever gotten updates? They're supposed to, you know, we want to update your service. And that's one of the things I, I told them already that, you know, there was some updates I didn't authorize. And not only were there updates, there was, uh, you know, additions to my account. Uh, you know, fake appearances, um, high bills. And it says, uh, a little bit further down, and I'll show you this, it says, incorrect account information. It says, uh, the message will attempt to scare you with large account balance, which has already happened. Uh, warning that someone has recently updated your account. Yeah. And, uh, just a lot of other things. I think one of the biggest things is when you send out a text message and you don't receive it back from the same address. I mean, it's only common sense to say something happened. So let me show you this part where it says, including Verizon Wireless. Including Verizon Wireless right there. And then we go further on. Large balances. Updates. Let's see. What do you do? You go in into the store and tell them. So you're going to have to go in the store and, and tell them and just constantly keep telling them until you get your messaging right. The other way to tell is, is on the setting is the phone has different settings for every single device. It has a carrier, the phone number, it has the carrier. It has a couple different uh, IDs that must be clearly defined for the phone to work correctly. One of them is the mobile station ID. Uh, a mobile station ID is basically the directory where the phone is because every time someone is calling you, they're calling into your phone. It has a directory. You save numbers on it. You can call out, but it's a directory at your phone. So one of the things that I was showing uh, the people from Verizon is that on my phone, my number is uh, 415-218-0276, and it's at verizon.com, and when I go and I show the, when I go and I show the MSID, it's this. You see right there, MSID, that is not my number. And when I see something like that, very clearly to me it becomes that uh, that number, the 415-233-8733, is uh, more than likely uh, the device and part of the person who is doing this uh, illegal and fraudulent activity, regardless if they are, you know, in the form of a law enforcement or not, they are still violating uh, rights and rules and uh, they should be punished for it. Because uh, no one should uh, tamper with uh, somebody's communications. It is, like I said, it's fraud, steal their information, steal money, make them pay more or somehow figure out how to take the money. It's all, it's all fraud. And the phone number is So the phone number is right there, 415-218-0276, see it? So that's the phone number and so that's how you can tell and kind of a tutorial on SMS uh, if your account is working. The best thing to do is, uh, like I said before, you just go to your text messages and you send yourself a message at your own carrier, which is uh, this right here, see? 
and both of them, I sent them, they both have not come back, and they would come back right here in the same screen, you know, it wouldn't be a different screen, and when you see that, you know, here's a third one I'm going to send right there. So when you when you see the thing went and nothing back on the same uh, this little module, which is this little device in here I'm showing you, so it would come back right here on the other side. It's not even coming back. You uh, clearly know that your device has been hacked. Um, go and do whatever you can to go in there and start educating the people and also keep working on it until you get it fixed. Um, because otherwise, especially if your livelihood depends on your phone, which most people do, you, you know, you are slowly but surely going to, uh, be blacklisted and then, you know, your income level will go down tremendously. All right. And we thank you for so much for paying attention. And as always, you can find us on JC Web, on YouTube, under We The People, uh, Facebook under Internet, uh, JC Event Review or Internet Event Review, actually. Um, it has Robin Williams' face on the front. So that's Internet Event Review on Facebook. It's a public page. And you can find us at Twitter at under Web JC Event View. Or you can find us at Today's RG News. So Today's, like Today's RG, as in Richard Gonzalez, and News. And, uh, until then, take care of each other and keep up the great work and uh, keep taking care of the good people in this world. Today, we're going to go and take pizza to Verizon <laughs> and explain it to them. Bye.